Okay, here we're on the website on section five, and we're going to talk more about mathematics in Python. We've already talked about addition, subtraction, multiply, and divide. Uh, you can also raise a, a value to a power. You can either use the star star, it's kind of an old one, or the up caret. Um, and you can also, um, percent is for modulus or getting the remainder of x divided by y. Use that once in a while. Um, I don't think I've ever used that one. Um, doing negative, you just put a negative in front of it and then there's an absolute. So these are built-in basic math functions. Um, what's more powerful is really the math library. Like the random library, it's got a bunch of functions in it. For this particular example, we're going to be looking at the trigonometric functions. So sine and cosine specifically. And this is something that we use in GIS. Uh, it's about once a year, someone ends up handing me a data set that has angles and distances, or bearings and distances, I should say, because uh, that's what we call them typically in the GIS world. You could also call it an azimuth and a distance. Uh, that's fairly common. Um, and we have to convert these because bearings and distances aren't something the GIS package handles. GIS packages like coordinates, and this only works in projected systems, so typically we're talking about eastings and northings. Um, and so we need to convert the bearings and distance into a delta easting and a delta northing so that we can go from one coordinate to the next. And this is pretty important because um, the United States, when it was surveyed, um, it was surveyed before we had satellites um, or cell phone towers or GPSs um, over hundreds of years. And they used compasses and what are called chains, which really are a chain that <laughs> was of a specific distance. And they would start at one point, and then they'd go a certain bearing and distance to find the next point, and the next one, next one. And most property descriptions are done with this, and it's called meets and bounds, um, but it has in it bearings and distances. So it's a regular thing you'll need to convert these, not too often, but once in a while, and it makes a great little assignment to do in Python for getting into mathematics. So basic idea is we're going to try and find a new easting and a new northing from an existing easting and northing by adding a delta easting and northing. So we need to find the delta easting and northing. You may remember from way back in geometry or trig the term SOHCAHTOA, which stands for sine is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. If we look over here, you've got the angle. So the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, or really the length of the opposite side over the length of the hypotenuse. Cosine is equal to the, uh, cosine of the angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So in other words, cosine of this angle is going to be equal to the length of the adjacent side, the one next to the angle or adjacent to it, over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Now we're not too worried about tangent, it's sine and cosine that we need for this. Um, so if we put this into mathematics, we can look at this as the sine of the angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Now that's fine and good when we're studying geometry or trig, but when we're talking about GIS, we typically have a bearing that is measured clockwise from north, true north, not magnetic, but true north. And this would be a delta easting, delta northing over a distance. So we can change this definition into the sine of our bearing in radians is equal to the delta easting over the distance. So um, the radians, these, these numbers have to be in radians, and typically we measure these bearings in degrees, so we need to convert them to radians. More on that in a second. So we can get the, take the sine of our bearing in radians, and that's going to be equal to the delta easting over the distance. Now the problem is what we want is a delta easting. Well, that's okay. If we multiply both sides of this equation by the distance, then we can see that the sine of the bearing in radians is equal to, sorry, times the distance is equal to our delta easting. Similarly, the cosine of the bearing in radians times the distance is equal to the delta northing. Okay, so the other thing we have to do is convert our bearing uh, from degrees to radians. We can do that by multiplying it times pi and dividing by 180. Um, you may have learned multiply times 2 pi and divide by 360, but that's the same thing. We just took the 2 out, um, cut each of them in half. Okay, and if you scroll down, you will see there's an example and there is some code. Um, now, I could just copy and paste this, and normally I would do that, but oh, there's some salmon data that I was just working on. 
Um, but instead, I'm actually going to type it. And the reason I'm going to type it, this is a Python script that I'm using to put some salmon data into a database. More on that later. All right, let's do a new file. Okay, and we do need to import math. Now, there's our math library. And then we've got an Easting. Whoops. Easting 1 is equal to. Now, I am going to go ahead and copy these coordinates because retyping them is just, you know, inviting disaster. Because typing a number that big, you're going to make some kind of a mistake. So it's good to do that. Um, but for now, I am going to go ahead and do some typing because when you're starting to program, actually typing um, helps. It helps you remember, helps you learn Python. So later on in class, just copy and paste everything. For now, you do, do some more typing than just copying and pasting. So uh, math has in it the constant pi, so we don't have to type in 3.1514 or whatever it is. And then we can divide by 180. Okay, so there's our bearing converted into radians. Now, one of the things I highly recommend doing is once you go ahead and write a few lines of code, go ahead and run it. Find my folder with lab one. And this is our coordinate exercise. Go ahead and run it now. It doesn't actually do anything. So let's go ahead and print this. Whoops. Now, one of the reasons that I periodically go ahead and run things is because I may have errors. And I'd rather find an error sooner than later. Okay, and even that, notice that it's still going to give me an error because why is that tab there? Oh, it didn't give me an error. Okay, well, it will if I put code on it. All right, so looks good. We've got a bearing converted to radians. All right, so next step, delta easting is going to be equal to math dot sign of our bearing. Now you will see that wing will automatically complete. It'll pop up as will automatic complete. I can select something in there and hit tab. That will finish it for me. My delta northing is equal to math dot cosine of our bearing in radians. There we go. Might want to print that out. Okay. We can think about this. It's like if our distance is 13 okay and oh our distance is 13 and our bearing is 1 then our deltas should at least add up to somewhere around 13 oh and they don't what's the problem okay well um, I didn't multiply these times the distance so this is how I actually write code I'll write a few lines of code I'll run it and see what happens if I have any problems I can't immediately resolve, I'll do a breakpoint, single step. That's how I do it. And I write a lot of code this way. Easting 1 plus our delta easting. Northing 2 is equal to our northing 1 plus delta northing. Print those two out. Okay, and there we go. Now, of course, some of you are already saying, but Jim, where's the comments? Yep, definitely need to add some comments, right? And you could put something fairly simple in, like set up the variables, or you could say set up the original coordinate. That's a better one. And then set up the bearing and distance. Now, I put 1 in there, which is kind of lame. Um, let's make it 180. See what it looks like. Okay, so we have a change in Y, or change in X, of about 0. Which makes sense. We're at 180 degrees. And minus 13 for our additional Y. Which makes sense, because we're 180 degrees, so we're going to be going down. <clears throat> um, let's try what happens when we say 90. 90 kind of switches. Now we've got an X because we're going to the east and we've got a really tiny Y value. That E to the minus 16, read that as this number times 10 to the minus 16 or 
10 moved over 16 times past the decimal. So this is a really, really tiny number. It's got 16 or 15 zeros in it. Uh, yeah, 15 zeros uh, before the, the, the 8.5. So it's a really, really tiny number. Um, so close to zero. All right, and that's how we take care of that. Um, oh, one last thing, precedent. So uh, you may have noticed here how do we know whether the multiply or the divide is going to come first? Now, in this particular case, it doesn't really matter because you could do them in any order. But if we were adding a number and then dividing the sum, we wouldn't be sure which one was done first. So a good thing to do is if you have any concern at all about what order the math is going to be done in is add parentheses. You can add parentheses and then this will be done first and then this will be done next. Um, you can add as many as you want. If they're extra, Python just ignores them. And so you can add lots. Cool? And that's it.